There are few issues as hotly contested and as poorly understood as the question of what makes a person gay or straight. It's a political question, a social question, a religious question, but it's also a science question, one that might someday have an actual provable answer. The handful of scientists who work in this underfunded and politically charged field will tell you that answer is a long way off. But as we reported last spring, their efforts are already yielding tantalizing clues. One focus of their research is twins. These bedrooms belong to twins who are nine years old. One room is all camouflage, airplanes, and military toys. The other, well, see for yourself. A pastel canopy, stuffed animals, white horses. Not all that surprising for boy-girl twins. Except these twins With your base coat. are Jared and Adam. I have the Marines parking only. And when I came for a visit, Jared was eager to show me his G.I. Joe collection. I have ones that say like Marine and SWAT. And then that's where I keep all the guns for them. Adam, on the other hand. This is one of oh, my dolls. Yeah, Brad's it. baby. This is made by the company that made this and this. I hate to interrupt you, but I just noticed you have nail polish on with stars. And diamonds. And diamonds. I have to ask you a question. Did you go to school like that today? Mm -hmm. I just showed them my nails and they were like, why did you do that? Like, Adam's behavior is called childhood gender nonconformity, meaning a child whose interests and behaviors are more typical of the opposite sex. Research shows that kids with extreme gender nonconformity usually grow up to be gay. Danielle right. is Adam and Jared's mom. How early on did you notice this difference? About 18 months, he was really into asking for a Barbie. He wanted a Barbie. At 18 at, months? At 18 months. And what about Jared? What was he asking Fire at 18 trucks. months? Fire trucks. Not that much has changed. Jared's favorite game now is Battlefield 2 Special Forces. What's your favorite game? It's called Neopets, The Darkest Fairy. If you were going to tell a stranger what you were like, what would you say? I'm a kid who likes G.I. Joes and games and TV. I would say like a girl. You would say, I'm like a girl? That's what you would say? Why do you think that is? Michael Bailey, a psychology professor at Northwestern University, is a leading researcher in the field of sexual orientation. They've grown up in the same house. They've been treated the same way. To me, cases like that really scream out, hey, it's not out there, it's in here. There's no indication that this mother is prone to raise very feminine boys because his twin is not that way. So you don't think it's nurture? I don't think that nurture is a plausible explanation. Psychologists used to believe homosexuality was caused by nurture, namely overbearing mothers and distant fathers. But that theory has been disproved. Today, scientists are looking at genes, environment, brain structure, hormones. There's one area of consensus that homosexuality involves more than just sexual behavior. It's physiological. Bailey and his colleagues have set up a series of experiments in his lab at Northwestern. The Chicago winters are harsh. In this study, researcher Garolf Rieger had gay and straight people sit in a chair and talk. He then reduced them to silent black and white figures and asked volunteers to see if they could tell gay from straight. The idea was to find out if certain stereotypes were real and observable. She looks quite feminine to me. He's gay. This is a man? Already I can see. He's gay. He's straight. That was so powerful. Exactly. Like me, more often than not, the volunteers in the study could tell who was gay and who wasn't. So is the conclusion that gay people do, in fact, move differently? Yeah, absolutely. It's not true 100% of the time. It is true on average. They also studied the way gay and straight people talk. Hi, it's nice to meet you. Would you like to have a drink? Sounds straight to me. And is straight. Hi, it's nice to meet you. Uh, do you want to go have a drink? Gay. This research is controversial, reinforcing the stereotypes, some say. 
But to Bailey, the stereotype suggests there's a feminizing of the brain in gay men and masculinizing in lesbians. But how and when does this feminizing occur? If the differences were already apparent in childhood, that would point to an early, perhaps even genetic origin. And that's what Bailey and Rieger are testing in a new study using childhood home movies. Here, volunteers were asked to rate each child's femininity or masculinity. Oh, so girly. I took the test. How about a big smile? And rated both these girls highly feminine. Then he showed me this little girl. <laughs> She's really not girly. Isn't that interesting? Okay. She's not girly. I'm going to give him a masculine. Turns out these physical differences can emerge fairly early. This little girl, she grew up to be straight. This little girl grew up to be a lesbian. The little boy with the gun is straight. And the game show host is gay. They make spring a lot nicer. If you can spot a child's future sexual orientation before he even knows he has one, doesn't that prove it's genetic? Studies have shown that homosexuality runs in families, so genes must be the answer. But then the researchers tell you identical twins.